Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a group focus element in your app. And a group focus element's got some characteristics of a pop up as well as a group. Um, but it's got one interesting characteristic that it needs a reference element. And let me give you a quick demo here. Uh, one of the good use cases for a group focus element is if you're creating uh, menus. So I've got this one example here. I click on the menu and it gives this pop-up. So this is actually the group focus uh, element that pops up here. And I've got different choices here. These are just simple groups that I created for this uh, demo. And then if you click outside of it, uh, both of those disappear. So that's one example of using it. Another example is within a repeating group. And right here, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, going over this user Sue, and it pops up additional information for that user. I've got another user, Jack, here, and it pops up uh, within the repeating group. So that's also using a group focus. In this video, this is the first of two videos, I'm going to show you the design for this menu right here. And then in another video, I'm going to show you how to implement it within a repeating group. And this one is a little more involved in, in creating the uh, group focus implementation. So let's, let's get right into the design here. So here we have um, example one, text, and then all I've got here is a, a simple icon. So over here icon and I think I just picked list for this yeah I just picked this one here so that's all it is is a simple list you can pick whatever you want for your for your app and in the workflow it's basically a toggle for group focus a and that's all that it does for this workflow and this is the work uh, rather the group focus a so if you come over here and group focus under containers so that's the group focus. Now, when you set it up, it's going to be blank at first, and it's looking for this reference element. And basically, for this right here, I've got group focus A. My reference element is this icon here. Okay, so one of the things you're going to need to do is to figure out which reference element. And you'll see also that the default is 0 and 0. So on this one here, the one I've got implemented, I've got an offset of minus 65. Now if I put this to zero, you're going to see the shift underneath the icon like that. So it's basically taking the lower left-hand corner of this icon and the upper left corner of the group focus. Now what I want to do is just go back and put it here. Because what I wanted to do uh, from a look and feel perspective is when I click on it, I wanted this group focus to show in the lower left-hand corner like it does. I'm just going to delete this here for a moment. And within the group focus, I um, don't have any type of content. Again, from a, a uh, group perspective, um, you could have different values in here for your type of content. Since I'm just doing a simple uh, pop-up menu, I don't need a type of content or data source for that matter. Uh, everything else is pretty much standard uh, on here. Within the uh, group focus, I do have three text fields, cho choice one, choice two, choice three, simple workflow. And I've got this set up to do a uh, um, custom state. And basically, I've got this custom state called pick group and uh, choices for choice one, choice two, and choice three. And that's to show or hide the various groups um, in here. I'll put a pointer for a video that I have for setting up um, custom states. Um, I'm not going to walk through the details of that in this video, but I will reference it. So when those um, buttons or one of these texts are clicked, then it's going to show the respective group. And I've got these conditionals here. So when the group focus pick group is choice one, make it visible. If it's not choice one, then it is not visible. And the similar for choice two and choice three. Now one other thing in the workflow that I have is when the group focus isn't visible, 
I go here and I set the state, the custom state, uh, to be blank. And the reason being is if I don't have that in here, then the last choice that I pick on here is going to show up even if the menu uh, isn't shown. Let me just do a quick demo on that. And we go refresh. Okay, so I click on that, comes up with the group focus, and I pick whatever group. Now when I click outside here or anywhere off of the group focus, then it, they both disappear. Now, just to show you, if I go, and if you're not familiar, you can disable workflows by clicking on this. So this workflow is now disabled. And do a refresh. Now when I click on it and do choice one or choice two, so now the group focus disappears, but my group still is showing. So the purpose, and I'm gonna enable the workflow, so the purpose of this is to set the value to blank. And basically, when the group focus is not visible, my group is also not gonna be visible. So that's it. This is just a quick and short video on how to use group focus. I will show you in another video coming up on how to set it up in a repeating group. This is a bit more complicated to set up, uh, but it's a pretty nice uh, feature so that you can use this within a repeating group as well. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Uh, again, I am going to have another video coming up if you subscribe to my channel you will get a notification on when that video and other videos are made available. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. Uh, again, I do appreciate you watching my videos, and I will talk to you later.